Hey, Josh Jr. here for a quick in-shop adventure. This adventure is, yes, a bucket of obsidian. But it is not any particular flavor of obsidian. It is a pretty special. Well, based on the location it was collected. This is all surface finds of the Royal Purple area at Lassen Creek. I've had it stuffed underneath the cabinet now for a very long time. And you know, it is time to do something with it. So we're going to put it in some barrels and get it rolling on the beast. As part of this obsidian tumbling project, I'm doing something new. I am trying out the Highland Park Lapidary Company Silicon Carbide 6090 grit. This is what's left of two, no, 100 pounds of the Rock Shed Silicon Carbide. Now, when I open this up, I notice something different. So let's put a little bit of this out, and I'll put it on the left. Put a little bit of this out and put it on the right and take a look at it. Here are the two grits. The one on the left, the rock shed. The one on the right, Highland Park, Lapidary. From this perspective, the rock shed 6090 is significantly larger. The grains of grit are much larger than that of the 6090 from Highland Park. I was hesitant about ordering the Highland Park grit. And this is what happens when you try to do something to save a little bit of money. Now, is it 6090? Oh, I'm sure it is, but there's more 90 grit in it than there is 60. What 6090 is, it's a blend of grits between those two sizes. So everything from 60, 61, 62, all the way up to 89 and 90. The Highland Park, same thing, but there just happens to be more uh, towards the smaller side. So we will see what happens. It may not be an issue on obsidian. It could be a major issue for my procedures on harder materials such as agate and jasper. Now that I made that interesting discovery on the difference between the rock shed coarse grit and the Highland Park coarse grit, it's time to put the Highland Park to the test to find out if it's going to be a significant difference on this obsidian. So what we have here again is the Royal Purple Area collected tumbled size obsidian. And then what I did is I threw in some pieces that still need some more work on them to fill up that barrel out of that. Yeah, I move buckets around all the time. I was really hoping to keep these kind of unblended with anything else but that's not going to happen i am just going to do this and call it good because i will have enough of a sample i honestly don't think i'm going to get any purple out of this there might be some rainbow some black who knows but i don't think there's going to be any purple out of it We might be surprised. So, I'm going to add the borax. And then I will add the one and a quarter cups of the Highland Park 6090 coarse grit. And we're going to roll it for my typical five days and see what happens. Well, it's been five days. About ready to shut this down and check what's going on with the uh, obsidian. Now, my previous segment where I was talking about the differences between the rock shed 
course grit in the Highland Park course grit. I'm not criticizing either one. That was to allow you to see that there is a difference in the course grit based on your supplier. So based on where you buy it from. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this and you're receiving instructions from other people because they say to do something a certain way for their grit and polish that they get from their sources and you are probably getting it from somewhere else so the results may differ. The procedures may have to be slightly different. So keep that in mind if you're out there trying to get advice or giving advice. Because the source and brand of your grit and polish does make a difference. The obsidian tumbled with the Highland Park 6090 grit is done. I do wish I had enough of the uh, rock shed grit to have one barrel at least rolled in it to give you a visual difference. But overall, for Obsidian, the Highland Park 6090 grit did just fine. It's about what I expected it to do, and uh, yeah, I really don't have too much of a problem with it for Obsidian. Now, when it's time to doing agates, which these were not done. These were done for another project that I'm doing a video on. Um, it's hard to say. So this spring when I'm done with obsidian, I will have to do a comparison with some agates to see how well to see how well the Highland Park course grit works with its smaller grains. So I guess I'll keep using it. Uh, my entire order finally caught in. They were back ordered for a little bit, but they sent me the remaining 50 pounds that they owed me. No problem. And uh, yeah, I'm going to roll these again though. And, and for another cycle of course grit. Uh, remind you, mind you, this is the um, Royal Purple dig site area, and this is just surface fine. So it's a mix of all types of obsidian varieties but there's a lot let's get this to focus there we go there's a lot of stuff that looks like this with these holes and some of the minerals and the dirt and stuff in them so I'm going to roll this again let me show you another example of it there you go you can see that Not exactly sure what to think of that. I'm not going to worry it right now. Worry about it right now. I'm going to roll them again with the Highland Park 6090 grit for another uh, cycle, and start the process from there. But there is a wide variety of obsidian types in here, which I was expecting a few different types, but not as many as what I'm seeing. Especially with these two. Now this one here will have additional varieties because it's stuff I threw in there to top off the barrel. But from this point forward there's going to be more blending of obsidian because I have some sitting behind me that I'll be using to top off these three barrels. So there you go everybody. Interesting. I am looking forward to trying this Highland Park 6090 coarse grit in agate and jasper this spring. But until then, just remember, everyone's life's an adventure. Then there's mine, working on obsidian. And due to quick little analysis of the quality of work that a new Highland Park, or not to do, the Highland Park 6090 coarse grit does. This is Adventures of Josh Jr. Have a good one, everybody. See ya!